What's up, YouTube? Ryan back today with another Minor League Monday. It's been a while, but today we're breaking down BaseballAmerica.com's Top 100 Prospect List. Let's do it. Welcome back to the channel. I'm going to jump into the video pretty quick here because this video, these usually take me a while. So we're going to go pretty quick with the intro. Um, I did take a quick look at this list. Haven't gone too deep into it yet. And I do see some pretty controversial things coming through. So I'm going to be pretty opinionated on some of these guys. Just throwing it out there. I think this list is honestly kind of bad. Um, usually Baseball America, I feel like they do pretty well, but they definitely always aim for the upside rather than, you know, like the floor, like being realistic, I guess. Like they pretty much take like one person's best tool and they're like, what could he do? And that's kind of how they seem to rank a lot of their players. So yeah, we're gonna jump into it pretty quick here. As always, you guys like the video, please get a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. Let's jump into player number 100. All right, we're gonna go pretty quick here. Bryce Miller, right-handed pitcher for the Mariners. You know, honestly, I don't know too much about him, but looking at his numbers, he is a solid arm. So top, I would say that's top 90 through 100. Can kind of be whoever. 99, Cole Young, another Mariners player here. Um, their website will tell us a little bit about him. So he was the Mariners' first round draft pick this year, and it looks like he did really well in his first uh, appearance at Pro Ball. So at 99, sure, why not? Jet Williams, I actually like Jet Williams as a prospect, 98. I'm not crazy about throwing new guys into the top 100, but I get it. Um, I do think Jet Williams is a good player, though, so I'm not mad about that. Gavin Cross at 97, I think he should be higher than this. So this is the first controversial one for me. I would have Gavin Cross probably like top 75 at least. Um, just look what he did in his first appearance at professional ball. I know he's a college guy, but like the dude hit eight home runs in his first 29 professional games. I absolutely love that. Over 1,000 OPS, almost 1,100 OPS. Again, I know college player playing at low A. It's probably why they have him ranked lower, but I do like Gavin Cross a lot. He was in my top 10 for that draft. So definitely like Gavin Cross. I would have him probably around the top 75. Jonathan Arenada, I don't get it really. I mean, he's 24 years old. Um, last year at AAA, he did do well. He hit 318, 394 on base percentage, 915 OPS, uh, 18 home runs. So, I mean, I get it, but he's just... Over his career, he hasn't been very good. So that's interesting to me. I'm not going to lie. I'm not sure who this guy is. <laughs> Again, uh, looks like he broke out last year in 2022. Only played 26 games, but did hit 346 with a 400 on base percentage. I'm not sold on that. The rest of his career so far has been nothing too spectacular. So not sold. This is a weird one for me. Austin Wells in ni at 94. I wanted to see Austin Wells in the top 100. But look what he did this year. He did deal with a little bit of injuries, didn't play a full season, but he did very well this year for playing at three different levels. Like he killed high this year at 323 there with a 430 on base percentage, over a thousand OPS. And then he came up to double A for his first time there. And like I said, he kind of dealt with some injuries this year. 260 is not great. 360 on base percentage, all right. But he's still at an 839 OPS, which I think is probably like worst case scenario for him. Plus, he plays pretty dang good defense. So. I actually like Austin Wells more than 94. Again, I probably have him in like the top 80. Um, Connor Norby, this is a solid player for the Orioles here. Second baseman prospect. Again, he's been he's like a solid player. I don't know what his ceiling really is. Um, he did hit 17 home runs last year at Double A, which is promising. Um, but he did perform very well in 2022. So I guess I get why they put him on this list. Um, Alex Ramirez at 92. I think Alex Ramirez is a super fun prospect. Definitely one of the most fun prospects in all of baseball. Um, I do have concerns down the road with his swing. I think it's a little big, um, but the dude hit tanks. He had 11 home runs only last year, but they were like 11 no doubters. Like every home run of his was absolutely mashed, uh, but he did strike out a lot and, you know, his swing is big. So I do have concerns with that. 92, fine with it. Kevin Alcantara, I wanted to see him a little bit higher than this, but not by much, only because they're moving him slow. I love Kevin Alcantara. I think that he's a great prospect. Kevin, like for what he is, he is a 6'6 outfielder. And last year at low A, hit 273, 360 on base percentage, 811 OPS. Like I'm cool with that. Max Meyer at 90, I get it, the injury. Um, I would just take him off the list at this point because, I mean, he's going to end up in like the Sixto Sanchez situ situation where. He's just not going to be on the list anymore because he was injured for so long. Um, they're saying he might not even pitch in 2023. So sad there. Oscar Colas at 89. I would put him a little bit higher just because he did have a freaking great year last year. Um, just absolutely killed it from double A and triple A. He's a little bit on the older side. He's 24. But this is a guy that if he can maintain the play, he's going to make a big impact at the pro level. Like 
He did awesome last year. Next up, Miguel Blaise. Um, has he even made it a rookie ball? No, he hasn't. Um, so I don't really get why he's on the list. He was born in 2004, so that makes him 19. So that's promising, at least. He's very young. Um, but I don't know how you can really put someone in the top 100 if they haven't made out a rookie ball yet. At 87, Masataka Yoshida. Dude, absolutely raked in Japan. Like, rake, raked. So I absolutely love it. How old is he? I cannot remember. Um, 1993, so he's young. One year younger than me. He's 27, so... You know, you're going to see that with someone that's played in Japan for a decade. Tanner Beebe, um, solid, solid arm. Um, had a really, really good year last year. Um, I'm okay with it. All right, Logan Allen at 85. Absolutely love Logan Allen. Absolutely broke out for the, the Guardians last year. Things he made an awesome arm for them. Brennan Davis at 84. Dropped down pretty low. Been dealing with injuries his whole career, which is just unfortunate because when he is healthy, he's so good. Um, but I get why they dropped him so low. I think the talent's still top 50, 100%. It's just, can he stay on the field? Jackson Job still on the list. I'm not quite sure I agree. Um, I know, I think he was the top arm drafted in 2021 draft, and he just struggled. At high, he did figure it out a little bit, though, which is promising, but he just couldn't figure it out. He just walked a lot of guys, honestly. Um, he just got hit up. Um, Yanner Diaz at 82. You know... <laughs> He's okay. Like, I'm not crazy about Yanir, but he's an Astro, and the Astros just seem to produce talent, so why not? Adele Amador, awesome prospect. Absolutely love him. I would have him higher than this. I'd have him in the top probably 60. Um, Drew Romo. This is another thing with Baseball America that kind of annoys me is they group these players together, like completely group team players together. Um, so, like, we got two Rockies players here, and we're going to see it more as we keep going. Um, Drew Romo in the top 100. I'm okay with it. I do think his ceiling's lower than most, but his floor is pretty solid. Libertor, just get him off the list. He's not a prospect anymore, in my opinion. Um, good pitcher, though. Pereira at 78. I I love Evan Pereira. I think he did regress a little bit because he just had crazy OPS numbers his first three years in the league, but he still had over an 800 OPS last year. Like, dude's a good player. I'd probably have him closer to the top 60 as well. Um, Brian Rocio, another player. I, I like Brian Rocio. He's pretty much Lindor kind of 2.0. I don't know if he'll be better than Lindor, but very similar skill set. I would have him closer to the top 60. Next up, Jordan Westbrook at 76. I'm okay with it. I do think he's a good player. Um, I'm not crazy about it because he's a little bit older, but, and I don't think he's ever going to be like a super impact player, but I mean, he's not going to be, he could be a good piece. Um, DL Hall, I agree that his numbers are there. Again, grouping Orioles players together. Um, I love his repertoire. I think he's nasty. Um, has dealt with some injuries. Luis Ortiz, I don't even know why he's on the top 100. Like, has, I don't even think he's had under a 4 ERA in professional baseball. I know he throws gas, but, like, eh. Uh, Henry Davis at 73, I'd have him higher, personally. I know he struggled a little bit at double A, but he did show that he's phenomenal on defense and, he can be a very impactful offensive player. Um, George Valera at 72. Okay, it's fine. The only reason why he should have gone down this year in the rankings is because he didn't get an opportunity at the bigs. And I think it's ridiculous. He should have 100% been playing at the, at the major league level last year. I just don't understand why they, they kept him down there. Um, Rafaela, not sold on him yet. But I know there's a lot of hype around him. Like around every prospect list, he's right around the top 100. Um I'm not sold on him yet, but I do think he has the skill set. Cam Collier at 70. Okay, if they're going to start ranking so many 2022 draft prospects, Cam Collier has to be higher than this. Like, has to be higher than this. this. I can't remember where I ranked Cam Collier myself right now off the top of my head, but he was like a top three guy out of the draft for me. I had to pull up uh, references for this one. Uh, baseball America wasn't tracking, but look at these numbers. In nine games, small sample size at rookie ball. First dose of minor league ball, 370. 514 on base percentage, 1144 OPS, two home runs. This is a player that is still young. He left high school early and raked in college. So to me, Cam Collier, one of my favorite prospects on this entire list now. Absolutely love Cam Collier. I would have him like top 40 probably. Um, Dylan Lesko, right-handed pitcher. I think he's fine. Bo Naylor. I uh, get Bo Naylor off the list. I don't even think he's top 100 in, in my opinion. I just He's never done anything too crazy to, for me to like, throw him on this list they just I think he could be an okay piece but i just don't see him ever being like a top three player on any major league team um dominguez at 67 still has the hype a little bit obviously it's died down from where it was but has shown that he can play 
Um, just got to be more consistent in his game. I definitely think he can still be like he can still put it together and end up being an MVP caliber player. Um, Josh Young, absolutely love Josh Young. I um, I don't really consider him a prospect anymore. He did okay in his his debut um, after coming off an injury. I think he's gonna have an awesome year this year for the Rangers. Edwin Arroyo at 65. Okay, he was incredible when he was with the Mariners, and he got traded to the Reds, which I thought was crazy because he was having one of the best single lay performances of the season, and they traded him in the uh, Castillo trade. So Castillo ended up doing really well for the Mariners, but Edwin Arroyo at 65, he's it's okay. I think he's a little small, his size, but he does play up. Um, Harry Ford, funny that used to be a Mariner and a Mariner now. Um, Harry Ford, love Harry Ford. Might have the best eye at the, the single A level. Um, good pieces and obviously the most athletic catcher in probably all the, the minor leagues. Um, Noah Van Marte, stud. Absolute stud used to be like a top 20 guy, fell down a little bit, um, still has that talent, 100%. 100%, there was a stretch of probably a month during the season where he was the best player in the minor leagues. He was doing crazy stuff. Peraza, get him off the list. I don't think he's really a prospect anymore. Cavalli, I don't think, I mean, he is technically a prospect still, but he's going to probably start on the team this year. Um, Manzardo, absolutely love Manzardo. This is a guy's top, like, probably like 30 for me now. Um, just unstoppable this season. Let's just pull him up because his season was incredible. So he played at high A and double A. And we'll just talk it's double A stats. 30 games. That's a solid sample size. 323 batting average, 402 on base percentage, 977 OPS, five home runs. Stud. Owen White, I think he's fine. I think he's a good pitcher. I think the Rangers have a lot of just good pitchers. Like outside of like Kumar Rocker and uh, Jack Leiter, like I do think they're going to be good. But they have a lot of people like Owen White. Um, I am curious if, you know, learning from DeGrom is going to help them out a little bit. Elijah Green at 58. Love it. I'm fine with that ranking. I'd probably have a little bit higher if they're going to include drafts D's from the 22 draft. Hassel at 57 is weird to me. I would have him higher than this, like top 40 for sure. I just don't think he did anything this year to really completely ruin his hype. Like he raked that high A and then he got traded and then struggled a little bit for like 30 games. Like, I don't know. I don't think he killed his hype at all. Um, but apparently for them, they did. All right. Now here we go for the old er Dodger prospects. Pepe, I don't consider him a prospect anymore. He pitched in the pros a decent amount at the end of the year. Gavin Stone, I think is nasty. I do think he's just disgusting. Oh, we got three Dodgers in a row. Michael Bush at 54. At some point, like, I don't know when they're going to bring him up, but like they need to trade him or, just let him play because he was very good again last year, but he's like 25 now and they didn't even give him a chance. Uh, Zach Nito, Angels. I am surprised to see this one. Like, first round pick, 13th overall. Like, why is he above some of these other players? I don't really get that. He's like, he's about to turn 22. I don't understand it. Like, he had good numbers. Don't get me wrong, but like, I don't know. Um, that's weird to me. Carson Williams. I actually like Carson Williams a lot. Had a good year. Showed more power than I thought he had. Um, I'd say right around 50 solid. I probably am a little bit lower than that, though. Just because he does show some inconsistencies with his swing. Zach Veen at 51. Again, I don't know what he did to kill his 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 hype. Like the dude is an absolute five tool player. Um I struggled at double A, I will say that. But I mean, how many bases he steal this year? 55? Like he stole 55 bases. Like he's gonna figure out his swing at some point. I guarantee it. Um Kevin Parada at 50. Okay, they're throwing a lot of these 22 draftees in this list, and I'm not a fan. Uh, I do think Kevin Parada is legit, though. I do think he's legit. He could definitely be in the top 100, but I haven't. Like, a lot of these new guys, like, I'd have towards the bottom half of the, the top 100. Same with Tamar Johnson. Like, I'm just not crazy about the 49 ranking yet. I personally don't like his swing. I'm cur I guarantee it gets changed, um, and I bet you he ends up doing well. But for now, like, I don't even know if I have him in the top 100 because he did struggle. Up next at 48, Mason Wynn. I think he's a good player. Um, I think it's a little high for him. I think he's a good piece. Again, I, I think he's a little smaller, a little bit on the smaller side. I'm not sure if he'll ever be like an, like a top three player on a team or not. I do think he'll be a good shortstop, though. Uh, team Kent, this dude absolutely broke out last year. Absolutely broke out. Was an abs just a stud. 1.38 and 16 starts at low A. Absolutely love it. Extremely good strikeout rate as well. 81 and 51 innings. Absolutely love that. Emmanuel Rodriguez, I think this one's high. He got injured last year, I believe. I don't think he played a full season. He did have some crazy numbers in his short season, though. 47 games at low A. At 270, but he had a 1044 OPS, hit nine home runs. 
thing is a little aggressive though. Brooks Lee at 45, absolute stud, one of the best college guys in the draft, if not the best college draftee. Um, I'm okay with it. Taj Bradley at 44 is insane to me. I have Taj Bradley. I thought I was expecting him to be in the top 15 this year. I'm not even gonna lie. I was expecting him to be in the top 15 on these lists. Look how good he's been in his minor league career. Like, yes, at AAA. I'm sorry, he had a 3.66 ERA in his first dose of AAA. He is 21 years old. He's so young still. It's absolutely ridiculous. He had a 1.7 over 16 starts at AA. To me, he's a top three pitching prospect, maybe even at top two. Uh, Royce Lewis at 43. Take him off the list. He's not a prospect anymore. Logan O'Hop, he's not going to be a prospect, but for the time being, I think he has had a really good season. I'm fine with it. Colton Kowser at 41. I'm cool with it. I think he's a good talent. Mick Abel at 40 is the worst ranking I've ever seen in my life. He's not even close to a top 100 prospect right now. Could he get there? Sure. Maybe. 3.5 in double A. Congrats. And five starts. Five starts. Very small sample size. Before that, he's never had better than a four ERA at low A and high A. I don't understand it. Strikeout rate is pretty good. So I'll give him that. I know he has good stuff, but he just hasn't figured it out. Colson and Montgomery at 39. I am totally cool with that. Love Colson. I think he's a stud. Kyle Harrison at 38. He might be the best swing and miss pitcher in all of the minor leagues. I'm fine with this. I would probably have him a little bit higher at this point because he strikes out so many guys. Uh, like at bare minimum, he's going to be an insane reliever. Um, Marco Luciano at 37. He's starting to drop down a little bit. He's, he keeps getting injured every year, it seems like. Missing a little bit of time. I'm okay with that ranking, though. Uh, Curtis Mead at 36. I think he's a little aggressive, but he did do very well this year. Soderstrom at 35. I'm okay with. Showed that he has a lot of pop. I'm hoping this year, because his first year, he showed that he can hit the ball very well. Second year, he showed he has a lot of pop, but he wasn't as consistent with the bat. Um, hoping he can put it together in his third season. Uh, Self Frelick at 34. Stud. Um, he's going to be a extremely good leadoff hitter. Uh, Brett Beatty at 33, I'm cool with it. He's not going to be a, pro a prospect for very long. I'm hoping he starts with the team this year and they give him a chance. We will see, though. Love Brett Beatty. Big fan. Shane Baz, get him off the list. Stud, though. Uh, Tiedman at 31. Big jump here. Ricky Tiedman was awesome. Absolutely just stud numbers last year. 2.17 over three levels. Almost impossible to hit. Love Tiedman. I'm fine with that. Like such an aggressive ranking, but he earned it. Miguel Vargas at 30s, just a stud. Tristan Cassis at 29. Neither of these guys should be prospects next year. Um, I am expecting Cassis to definitely start with the team next season. Hunter Brown at 28. Another absolute stud. That honestly, I just don't even know why he didn't get much of a shot. He did end up making two starts for the Astros, and he was pretty much unhittable. So Hunter Brown is gonna have an insane major league career, in my opinion. Brandon P. Fett at 27. Oh, my gosh. Is a Diamondbacks fan signed me up for this, but I don't think he's that good. Uh, he did have a really good year last year at AAA. I'll give him that. But 27 is very aggressive. Evan Carter at 26, another extremely aggressive ranking. I think he's good. I think he's like probably going to be the sixth best player on that Rangers roster, though. Um, Pete Crow Armstrong, big fan. You all know I love PCA. I'm cool with 25. Um, even a little aggressive, I would say. I'd probably have him like top 40 for sure. Drew Jones at 24. If they're throwing these guys in here, I get it. Um, I'm surprised he's not higher, to be honest, because we haven't seen some of the other guys from the top draft picks. Um, but I'm okay with it. Uh, Andy Rodriguez at 23. Another aggressive ranking, but he was a stud last year. Jackson Merrill. Wow. Very, very aggressive here. And again, like I said, they like to find the one thing that they're really good at. And like he hit 325 last year in his first season. But I just, I don't get it. Top 25? No. Like I would have Merrill down in like the 70s probably still. Not to say he's not a good player, but like until he really shows that he's that good, like he hasn't done anything to show that he's a top 20 prospect yet. Like he just hasn't. Bobby Miller at 21, he's like, one of the hardest throwers in the minor leagues. I know he's going to be a stud, so I don't hate it. Gavin Williams was awesome last year. He's one of those Guardians pitchers that we're talking about. And then we have another one here with Daniel Espino. Both super good. Very, I keep saying the word aggressive, but they are aggressive. Like Espino, I get. Gavin Williams, that was a big, big jump. Um, but I, they're both really good players. Uh, Diego Cartaya at 18. I'm fine with it. Definitely like a top probably three catching prospect now. Um with a couple graduates. Ezekiel Tofar 
Ezekiel Tovar at 17. I do think it's a little aggressive, but he was a stud last season. Kodai Senga, pretty much impossible to hit in Japan. So I'm curious how he how he'll do here. Um, but I mean, he's a veteran. He is so good. Jackson Holiday. There is the number one pick. I figured we'd get to him soon. I was hoping it was in the top 10. At least he's not in the top 10. Just, I'm fine with this. I think Jackson Holiday is incredible. His bat to ball skills are maybe the best in the top, whole top 100. Anthony Volpe at 14. I'm surprised he's not in the top 10. I am. Um, I definitely think he's a top 10 player. Jordan Lawler at 13. I About where I expected him. I expected him probably like anywhere between like 8 and 12. But 13 is right outside of that. Marino at 12. I don't consider him a prospect anymore, but he's an absolute stud. I'm super happy they're both playing the Diamondbacks. So say that. James Wood at 11. Wow. Okay. I have James Wood. And again, I haven't made my list yet. I'll, I will make one this season. But he's top like 40 for me. Yes, he showed that he can absolutely rake. 337, 453 on base percentage, 1054 OPS, 10 home runs. but. I was I would need bigger numbers than that than to put him like near the top 10, like number 11 prospect. I'm sorry. Basically, they just took that he rakes and they said, OK, let's just throw him as high as possible because I don't know if he did that at, you know, high A his first season. then sure. But like single A, like those numbers aren't anything that we haven't seen before. Like if he would have hit, you know, 17 home runs in 50 games then we have a little bit more of a conversation. But I don't know. Top 40 for me. I do think he rakes. Marcelo Meyer at 10. This is, I don't know why the scouts love Meyer as much as they do. I mean, I'm definitely like a Jordan Lawler over Mayer guy, um, but I do think Marcelo is good. I just don't think he's there yet. Like, I don't think he's a top 10 prospect yet. He just hasn't shown it. Like, like we said, last year was his first full season. And, you know, like I said, he hit 286 at low A and he hit 265 at high A. Like, I don't know. He's not there yet. He's not there. He's not a top 10 prospect. He's probably like top 25. We have him top 25. Um, Alvarez at nine is weird to me. Um, he has shown that he does have bat to ball problems, but the dude has insane power, plays good defense. Um, like I would definitely have him in the top five, <laughs> like 100% probably top three. I think I ranked him at three when I did my last list. Ellie De La Cruz at eight. Again, an aggressive ranking, but I get it. His season was absolutely just absurd. Um, just insane. We'll just look at his double A stats at 305 with eight home runs in 47 games and 357 on base percentage, 910 OPS. He's basically O'Neill Cruz 2.0, showing that he can possibly be even better. Um, just a crazy skill set, super athletic, and he's just a giant. How tall is he? He is O'Neill Cruz is 6'7, Ellie Dale Cruz is 6'5. So very similar skill set, and I just I'm not sold on it yet. I get why he's in the top 10 here, but for me, he's still like a top 15, probably. He's definitely up there, but probably like a top 15 just because I want to see more from him. I want to see him duplicate it. So if he can do it again this season, I will officially give him the credit he deserves. Yuri Perez at seven. I'm cool with it. I am super okay with him being in the top 10. Grayson Rodriguez, it's sad that he's still on this list because he's, in my opinion, the best pitching prospect in baseball. Got hurt last year. Just didn't get his opportunity to debut. They should have pulled him up sooner, in my opinion. Andrew Painter at five. Oh, my God. Oh, my goodness. That is, like, the most aggressive ranking I've ever seen. But he was unhittable last year. He was unhittable last year. Again, I probably have him in the top 15 just because I would need to see more. But he was just unhittable last year. 1.48 in his first season. And his strikeout rate, 167 in 109 innings. Just so filthy. Um, like I I get it. Like he probably has the highest ceiling and that's why I ranked him as my favorite pitcher out of that 2021 draft because he's just, he's six, seven easy mechanics throws like 98 and just has nasty stuff. Like has four pitches. Just disgusting. Shouldn't be possible. Walker at four, definitely a consensus top five prospect stud. Jackson Shirio at three. Oh my God. Like, I'm sorry. Like, no, 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 no. No, no, no. I love Jackson Cheerio. I think he's an absolute stud. But no, not yet. He raked in low A. He raked in low A. I get it. And he's young. He is, what is it, 19 years old. But he did struggle at high A. Barely had a 300 on base percentage and was just terrible at double A. Not yet. 
Not yet. Probably a top 15 still. Like, this was a guy that wasn't even the top 100 last year before the season. You're going to put him at three now? He did not do three. He did not do number three thing. He did not do number three things. I'm sorry. Lowey was great, but no. Probably like a top 15 guy. Um, Corbin Carroll at two. Absolutely love it. And then Gunnar Henderson at one. I get it. Um, you can literally flip those guys around. I think Francisco Alvarez is the number three on this list, personally. Those are the three guys. I think Carroll and Henderson both start with their teams this year, hopefully day one. Um, I think Corbin Carroll deserves to be number one. I am a Diamondbacks fan. I'll be a little biased there, but I just think he had a better season. Like He was pretty much better in every single category, but I get it. Gunnar Henderson's ceiling is probably a little bit higher because of size and position. Um, he plays shortstop. He plays that premium shortstop position, and he is a big dude. So I get it. But then you have Corbin Carroll, on the other hand, who has shown that he hit for power, and he's the fastest player in the major league. So it's like, they're awesome. <laughs> they're both incredible. I love it. Um, if you would have asked me two years ago who I thought was going to be the top two prospects in baseball, I would not have said these guys. So love seeing them up there. Um, I knew they'd be close, but I don't think they would be number one or two if you asked me a year or two ago. So, so that's it. That's going to do it for today's video, everyone. Honestly, I just think this list sucks. And in my opinion, there's just way too many, you know, what if rankings. Like, it's not if they're actually good or not. I felt like, <laughs> like, it just made no sense. Like, they're taking guys from the 22 draft and they're ranking them higher than guys that are like really, really good prospects and are still young. And they didn't even do good in like their short season debut. So, like, I'm so confused. Like, it's so weird to me. Um, how they did go after this list this season. I think it's the worst one that I've reviewed in the last two years. Um, but we'll see. Maybe they'll make adjustments in their midseason rankings. At least the top like 15 were pretty good. Uh, but a lot of aggressive rankings, and that's kind of what they're known for. So, I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's video, everyone. If you guys like this video, please give a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think of this video, this prospect list. Am I crazy for not liking it? Like, Maybe I'm maybe I'm not in the right headspace to be recording this video or something, and it's perfect. I don't know, but it just feels a little off. All right, everyone, that's going to do it for today's video. Catch you next time. See ya.